Hello besties, welcome back to another episode of I Am Besties. As always, I'm your host, Vanessa. And I'm Stephanie, and today we are here with the badass CEO of Hija de Tu Madre. Round of applause, everybody. Thanks, y'all. Round of applause. How are you? Oh, sorry. This is Pati. <laughs> um, I'm great. I'm in my paisa era. Like, yes. I'm good. We would love the outfit. Please give us some details about it. <laughs> give us a little tour. Give us I a tour. Am. Okay, okay, okay. So the shoes, I think these are Nasty Gal. Ooh, yes. Love. The chaps, Poshmark. I'm obsessed with Poshmark, if you guys Ooh. aren't into that. Um, the jeans, I think, are Levi's. The shirt is Hija de Tu Madre. Ooh, it says make hefa moves on the back. We'll talk about it. <laughs> um, and then this is a Stetson um, from Austin. Nice. Ooh. And jewelry, Hija de Tu Madre, too. Available at Hija de Tu Madre. Com. Yes, Ooh. yes, yes. Love that, is love that. Is that okay? No, like, hell yeah. yeah. No, yes, no. Every time we have a guest that has, like, some kind of, like, brand or a line, we're always like, girl, Perfect. plug it, yeah. plug it. Um, what part of Mexico are you from? So my parents are from Jalisco. Oh, okay. This little pueblo called San Juan de los Lagos. No fucking way are right now. Are we primas? No, no, no. But my oh. husband is from San Juan de los Lagos. Stop I it. swear to God. That's, That's so funny. true. I've never met someone from Wait, there. Could yeah. your husband be like a long lost primo? Maybe. maybe. What's what del... Delgado. His last name's de Anda. Oh my gosh, we for sure are cousins somehow. That is so crazy. I just visited San Juan de los Lagos, like, I think like two, three years ago for the first time. That's so Yeah, crazy. that's awesome. She said, just visited two, three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I go to Mexico often, so to me, it was like, that's cool. Um, yeah. Do you go often? Um, I try to. I was just there for... When was, what was it? It was like my dad's birthday and then we went for Christmas. Mm -hmm. My dad's like one of 12 siblings. Oh, wow. My mom's one of seven. So I brought my boyfriend on that trip. Mm -hmm. It was like a lot. I think it was like very overwhelming for him too. Um, But yeah, my family's like very overbearing. I love them, but they're like that typical Mexican. Yeah, I get that. I love that. I love that. Um, I I love that you wear the hat, by the way. Like... You pull it off so well. I'm so jealous. I literally always want to wear a hat, but I feel like I look like a fucking bean head. Something Stop. dumb. I don't have the head shape for a hat. I don't have the head shape for it either. Mine's like kind of like square or like, I don't know. So when it sits, it gives me like a huge headache. Cause I Can feel I like- see? I don't believe yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Try not to. Let me see. Oh, what? You look like the Girl, villain no, of the like, telenovela. First of all, you look so hot. <laughs> the villain. <laughs> and like the villains are always the hottest ones. Oh my god, here your turn because okay. it's not for me. But do you see how it just like sits on top? It kind oh, of yeah. Like, Vanessa in. looks like the Nina Buena. Yes. You know, her my, daddy, my daddy owns a hacienda. She, yeah, she but she's waiting stole it for from that you. inheritance. I just shop all day. I don't do anything. <laughs> she's coming back because they gave the inheritance to me. <laughs> I'm going to kill her. She's I'm gonna Yo, claim it. Man. Dude, I hate it. But you look great in it. I love Thank it, by the way. You. No, it love really the, fits you. Love the hair, love your style, everything. You. And honestly, it just makes sense like that you decided to start your own brand. You, you seem like a very creative person, not just with your brand, but also like your style and everything. Yeah. So I really love that. Thanks. What was like your thought process? What how did you had tu madre come to be about? Like what was that? Oh, that's right. Yeah, so Ihat Madre is a Latina lifestyle brand. So we design apparel, accessories, and stationery that are all Latinx inspired. Okay. So I founded the company back in 2016. And okay. like, I don't know if y'all remember, that is like Trump, like <laughs> apocalypse. <Yes. laughs> um, and I just feel so inspired, honestly, by like the racism. Like I wanted to create my own space where we could celebrate culture and just like be proud of where we come from. and. Mm-hmm. Our first product, it was our Virgencita jacket. It's like a denim jacket with like La Virgen de Guadalupe on the back. And I just felt like this jacket perfectly describes me. Like, I don't think there's anything more American than denim. There's nothing more Mexican than La Virgen de Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. So when you put those things together, I feel like that describes me. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of other people. So I just felt like there was a really big opportunity to create like really dope fashion pieces but like inspired by our culture and did you um originally want it to be like a fashion brand or were you just like oh i'll just see where this kind of goes so 
You have to mother has gone through like so many births and deaths. Like it first started out as a travel blog. Mm-hmm. Oh, so like okay. a year before that in 2015, I moved to Mexico City. I'm like a Nosabo kid. So I really wanted to feel closer to my culture and yeah. get my Spanish better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's my travel blog. So I was like blogging under like the name Hija de Tu Madre. Mm-hmm. And then when I came back home, when I was done traveling and like Cheeto Head was like running his mouth, <laughs> I was like, I need to do something with yeah. this. Yeah. And yeah. so I had the idea for the brand. Yeah, I love that you put in your, you know, I feel like a lot of times when people, you know, the political climate is like very like fucked up. People tend to like, you know, speak out of their ass or like spread more negativity and like just do shit like that. But I feel like you really put that energy into something beautiful, you know, something that can make you proud of our culture and especially in the climate. But, you know, sometimes it's good to talk your shit. You know, sometimes it's good. Sometimes I need to hear it. You know, let's bring that back. You know, let's talk (laughs) shit. Let's bring bullying back. Let's bring bullying back. You know, like it needs to happen. Um, how How long did you travel Mexico for? That time, I think it was like maybe like six or eight months. Oh, I was wow. like all over Mexico, went down to like Central America, Belize, Guatemala. Wow. Um, just like backpacking, like no money. Oh my Whoa. goodness. Backpacking. Yeah. Can we talk about that? That sounds yeah. like freaking surreal. Like I always wanted to backpack, but I don't have the balls. I just feel like personally, like I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like if I wasn't a woman, I would for sure do it. How was that experience for you? So that time I had a friend like meet up with me at some point, but honestly, I feel like Central America like really changed me. I feel like that Mm -hmm. sounds like corny, but like, I feel like it doesn't get like enough representation. I feel like it's always forgotten about, but Mm -hmm. there's like such a rich culture there, like so much cool things happening there. And yeah, I think it just like opened me up to realize like, bro, like Latin America is like put in such a sh- like shitty light. Mm-hmm. Like the way the U.S. talks about yes. anything south of the border is like chaos, drugs, yeah. cartels, and like not. Nah, it is so bougie. Yeah, no. freaking sepia filter on every movie. Exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. Before we continue with today's episode, we're gonna take a quick break to shout out our sponsors at Manscaped. There's a certain confidence that comes with a fresh shave. There's an aura, a vibe. You know the feeling, and you can see the confidence when someone is well groomed we call this bge big groomed energy and there's only one way to get that bge manscaped we'd like to introduce you to their best and biggest ultimate hygiene bundle yet the platinum package 4.0 manscaped is the leader in men's below the waist grooming and you can now trust them with the rest of his body join the 4 million individuals worldwide who trust manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20 percent off plus free shipping with the code besties yeah one time um i was you know feeling a little frisky a little touchy a little spontaneous so i wanted i was with this man and i just wanted to put my hand on his pants you know because mm-hmm. i was already like being touchy and like kind of all in on him and then obviously i wanted to see what he was working with he you was know? packing what was packing down there so he didn't let me put my hand down there and then, shaved. and then, yep, sure enough, he came clean that he was embarrassed that he didn't feel like it was groomed well enough for Ooh. me to go down there. And honestly, I was just like, wow, how dare you? Like, That's a missed opportunity right there. Yeah, and if he would have just had his shit straight, you know, because that was his personal thing. Like, he didn't want to, you know, cause yeah. he, whatever he felt, you know, but... Um, and even me, it was like, damn, like, I felt, I thought men were always ready to go. So True. what's, what's going on, man? Y'all slacking? Y'all need some Manscaped products? Come on, get it together. Cause girls trying to get their nut too. You and know? Manscaped's got you. And Manscaped's got your back. So get into it. Get into it. Yeah. <laughs> get into it. Yeah. All right. Manscaped's brand new Platinum Package 4.0 is the biggest bundle they've ever offered, giving a bulk discount on Manscaped's top products. Stop paying more for his grooming products, ladies. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is a one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. They designed this package to allow you to fully align your entire hygiene routine with elite products. Inside the Platinum Package, you'll find their Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo Plus Conditioner, Ultra Premium Deodorant, Crop Reserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Ball Spray Toner, Anti-Chafing Boxers, and the Shed Travel Bag to hold all your goods while traveling. Whew, that was a... 
tongue twister. Tongue twister. That, out of, that, you're out of breath at that point. <laughs> Honestly, um, <laughs> thank God they throw in a bag in there. Hell yeah. <laughs> the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer feature proprietary proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect his delicate parts and holes both are waterproof so you don't have to worry about his mess in addition to shaving you can now completely upgrade your shower routine with the ultra premium body wash and ultra premium two-in-one shampoo conditioner this luxurious combo will seriously leave your skin and hair feeling hydrated and smelling fresh make sure and Make sure you and your man don't forget to apply their aluminum-free, very important, ultra-premium deodorant for that cologne-quality scent on the go. But it's not just his pits that stink. We know his balls can stink, too. (laughs) Thankfully, their Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner can solve this problem for you. When you smell his sack, you'll never go back. (laughs) Manscaped even threw two free gifts to their Platinum Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers, and the Shed Travel Bag. These boxers are so comfy. (laughs) You'll need a pair from him or her. The Platinum Package 4.0 covers all the bases to keep you smooth and smelling good. This is the best bang for your buck. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BESTIES at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code BESTIES. Unlock your big groomed energy with Manscaped. And remember, when he trims his hedges, the tree stands taller. And I believe it. (laughs) Back to your regular scheduled programming. Um, Can I ask? Because I've always wanted to do backpacking, but my parents are like... Very mm-hmm. overbearing as well. Mm-hmm. So was that like difficult to kind of be like, hey, um, I'm going to go travel Mexico. See you later. Bye. Yeah. Um, I think the attitude when I first moved to Mexico was like, we left. So why are you going back? You know what I <laughs> yeah, mean? Yeah. Like, why are you backtracking? <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like I grew up as a roquera. So like I'm used to disappointing my parents. Mm-hmm. So like, <laughs> so like I just don't listen to them anymore. And I don't think they expect, I love you mom and dad, but like I think they understand like yeah. I'm just going to do me. Yeah. Yeah, I know uh, yeah. And then I did a backpacking trip. I think for my 30th or my 29th birthday a couple years ago. And I went to Europe by myself. Oh, wow. I don't speak French. I like literally, I think I said two words that entire trip. I was like going <laughs> crazy. So I was like, you just. Anyone want to have a conversation? Exactly. I was just too shy. I was like, me van a robar. Um, yeah, like you just got to get used to like being alone. Yeah. yeah. And be comfortable with that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. What was your favorite like location that you visited? I really loved Amsterdam. Nice. It's a vibe. Ooh, I've heard a lot of beautiful things well, about Amsterdam. What about like in the um like like the Latino countries? Um, Latino. I loved Antigua. I love Oaxaca, Chiapas. Oh, I want to visit Oaxaca so bad, but only because there's the biggest tree in the world there. The one that like oh my gosh, I think it's called like a El Arbol de Tule or yes! something like that. Yes, I want to go so bad and just like run yeah. laps around it or something. Dude, I've heard that hugging trees is actually like very good for you to hug trees. Oh, is that yeah. why I say go hug a tree when yeah. you want to mm-hmm. like calm but down? But it's yeah, but it's actually like like scientifically proven that something happens when you hug a tree. Like I, I forgot. Don't that. you know? Don't talk <laughs> for me. Don't, you yeah. guys are read it us. somewhere. Some go look it up <laughs> if you want to educate yourself on what it does. But yeah, I love hugging trees. I yeah, hugging trees. honestly, when I saw, obviously, when I was looking you up and stuff, and I saw that you uh, traveled, I was like, I was like, this is my dream. Like, I want that's just my f- passion, I guess, like yeah. traveling. So when I saw that you were like um, kind of traveling Mexico, I was like, that's amazing. Like, because uh, like you said, like most people paint Mexico in such a negative way that it's scary to be like, well, can I go here? And right. as a woman, like, is it going to be safe for me? Because yeah. mostly I travel to where I know family is. Because right. I'm like, just in case I can call you and be like, come pick me up. <laughs> yeah, come pick me up. <laughs> yeah, this fucking shithole. But <laughs> no, for the most part, I just recently drove in Mexico. My Like, I try not to that much. But I went to San Miguel de Allende. Oh, and that? it was so beautiful. It was so, so, so beautiful. It was honestly, like, I was... I just feel like you think of Mexico and you kind of have, like, this idea of, like, you know, little pueblitos Mm -hmm. and, like, very, uh, very Coco, you know what I mean? And that's kind of the vibe I got from San Miguel Allende. Like, it's very historical. Um, Everything is kept very authentic. Yeah, just like Guanajuato. It's a pueblo mágico, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cute. So it was really beautiful. And I drove and my mom was like, stay on the carretera. Like, don't go anywhere else. And I was like, no, no, no. And I got lost. And I did end up, like, kind of... 
swerving into i don't know like la libre i guess and it's it's scary because you're like yeah. i'm a woman there's only women in this car you know if something happens i almost crashed into a police and i was like oh, oh my, my god. god like this is not happening right now i was panicking but everything was okay you know just stay stay in your lane pretty much also like that's so ballsy because i feel like the mexican driving in mexico oh my god. like their gps makes no <laughs> sense None. their turning lanes are like literally no i don't know like right. this is the going straight and then the turning turning lead is on this oh side even though gosh. you're going this way and they like don't respect like the laws like the <laughs> driving like nothing no. like they just out of pocket with everything it's scary i, I will never drive in mexico i my my dad says that fui hija de trailera no, literally. <laughs> i'm always driving and i drove in san miguel de allende and let me tell you the streets are tiny like tiny tiny yeah, tiny yeah, streets yeah. and one of the things i saw when i was even looking it up was like oh don't drive like just take a taxi but i like driving because then i could just leave whenever i want so i was like fuck it i'll drive big mistake huge literally the streets are like this big and i was in a like a truck so i was like oh my god i'm about to crash into my car has that beep 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 whenever anything's too close and that's and all i heard <laughs> the whole time i was just like beep beep and i was like fuck you but you know what um i feel like if anybody is up for the task it's steph because she reverse parks everywhere she goes that tells you all you need are to you know are you for real that tells just, you all you need so to know it's so convenient honestly reverse parking is the most convenient way to park because then you just get in your car and go forward i feel like if you reverse park everywhere you go like you're you reach like top like driving yeah. like you just, you're yeah. you're a high High functioning yeah, person. You are, you are. <laughs> and she doesn't need her GPS for shit here. And I'm like, what? Like, if I don't have my GPS, like, I'm lost. Like, that's it. I'm done. And she doesn't need it. I'm she telling like, you, I, I everything. For a while, I wanted to be a, a trucker because I was like, this is the only way I can travel. And I was like, this is perfect. Like, I. <laughs> Making money while traveling. Yeah, like, I'll just be driving, yeah. you know, in my trailla and I'll just stop in places. And my family, all my uncles are traileros. Wow. But I doubt, my parents are very much like, not like, if I'm like, like, I'm going to do whatever I want. My mom was like, I don't give a fuck. No, you're not. <laughs> like, my mom's like that. So even if I wanted to go that down that career path, I don't think they would have allowed me. They would have just followed me. They would have bought their own trailer and just followed me with them. That's the name of your album, though. Like, Hija de Trailer. Hija de Trailer. <laughs> like, that is so good. Well, I don't know. I I think I got used to, to, to driving because my parents moved to Oregon so I would always visit them and it would just be a lot nicer in car and yeah. I think that's why it wasn't that scary driving in Mexico because I was so used to long drives that I was like oh a six hour drive like pff, that's nothing like I could do that right. in one day and it, it was it was fine I'm alive thank you thank God. So cool. <laughs> um I have a question about your company how big is your company um like employee wise yeah. i think we're like eight okay right now. it's a super tiny team Girl, i thought we were gonna say like three so to me that's like huge yeah, yeah. that's that's huge. dope that's we, not too big because it feels like is it like easier to manage <gasps> i don't think it's easier to manage and i don't mean that because like the team is like crazy or anything mm -hmm. but i think it's just like it's hard being a girl boss. Like yeah. one employee, two employees, three employees, eight. I feel like I'm still getting used to how things are growing oh, and changing. Because okay. it used to be like me for so long. It was like mm -hmm. me, just me for like two or three years. Wow. And like, I don't know about y'all, but like I'm very, I was like those kids that would like do all the work in the class project. Like oh I don't know how goodness. to share. Um, and so even learning like how to delegate, delegate yeah. is yes. like actually like very new to me. Oh do you give God. your team the create, like um, do you allow them to be part of like their creative process? Process. yeah so i feel like the marketing our marketing team has like a lot of range as far as like content and tiktok mm -hmm. goes they have like really great ideas they they kill it um and then as far as like product development goes most of that stuff is still right now it's just me i think i have a hard time letting go um because the brand is so much like my point of yeah. view that it's like hard to share baby. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um but yeah we're fun. We're a fun bunch. That's awesome. And Thanks. how do you guys get the creative juices flowing to like create new products, you know, things like that? What inspires you? What what comes to mind when you think, okay, I want to create a new product? Like what gets yeah. your creative juices flowing? Honestly, it's just like the uni I feel like this sounds so lame, but I feel like Latinos are influencing like media and culture right now, like so intensely. Like Bad mm -hmm. Bunny is like oh, yeah. not a Latino artist. He's like a global artist, yes. you know? So even like stuff like that, like noticing like what's in the ether, what's trending. Mm -hmm. Um, like we did this shirt that's like 
Sorry Yo Soy Así. Mm-hmm. Um, like, very inspired by, like, yes. Bad Bunny's last song. Yeah. Yes. So, like, little things like that. I get also so much inspiration from my family. Like, all yeah. this shit that my mom used to tell me growing up. <laughs> like, <laughs> even the is. brand Hija Tu Madre. Yes. Like, that's, like all, that's all my mom. That's hilarious. When you think of Hija Tu Madre, does any scenario stand out to you from, like, when your mom ever told you that growing up? Something oh, like, just like, oh, my God, I remember this one time I was doing this and just yelled um, at me. So, like, I mentioned I was, like, rockera growing up. So, like, ruining all my back-to-school clothes, you know? Or, like, cutting things up. I I remember, like, I had these pink Converse. And my mom... This is probably, like, our biggest fight to date. I remember, like, using one of my pink Converse and using the shoelace to create a strap, putting my pencils and lunch money in the (gasps) shoe and using it as, like, a bag. Like, that was my handbag, a filthy shoe. Oh, my God, that is so funny. My mom was like, you're embarrassing me. You're (laughs) embarrassing the family name. Go back inside and change. She's like, why a convert? Porque una bota. Comprate una bolsita. No, wait, don't even get me started. That would be such a cool bag. No, literally. No, but you, you know what's cute, too? I always I always wanted, like, botas. But my yeah. family's not from, like, they're more, like, city vibes. Yeah. So we didn't, we didn't like, use botas or, like, hats or anything like that. And I always loved seeing girls, like, in their botas, like, pull out the things from their shoes. It looks so cute. Right. It's like the bra, but, like, more yeah, paisa. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's cute because you kick your leg up and you're like, oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> I love that. That's, That's so, so cool. Cute. Um. Oh my god, I had a question. I completely just you got a brain trip my mind. It's I okay. well, you know, it reminded me when you said about the Converse. When I was younger, I wanted Converse. Like they're yep. like my favorite shoes, and my mom would throw them away because <gasps> she was like, "Those are for emos," and she wouldn't like let me buy like skinny jeans or stuff like that. And she'd be like, "Those are for emo people." And like, everyone, right. I don't, I don't know if you guys did this, but back then, like on the last day of school, people would sign like your clothes. Yeah, yeah. As like a like a goodbye. I That's never got so to do cute. that. The hell, mom? Wait, so you were emo growing up? It is emo? It is emo? It is emo. (laughs) No, I wasn't, but my cousin who lived with me at the time, she was very much like rocker vibe. So I I think I tried to like tap into that. And my mom very fast shut it down. Yeah, she was like, you're not. No. She's like, do you cut yourself? I'm like, do you cut yourself? (laughs) Because they were like freaking like him, you know, very intense rocker bands and she's so dope now i love you i'm gonna show you i love you Vero. um but my mom was i think it's because my grandma lived with us you know and like i think grandmas have a harder mm. influence than oh, yeah. because even if my mom wanted to give me that like liberty yeah. grandmas are always like mm, ¿qué estás haciendo? Mm-hmm. i felt that yeah no, grandmas can be ruthless they're yeah. intense they could be do, yeah, do you resonate you. with that? Oh my <laughs> gosh. Do you have the lucky Like, few, rest in peace, drama? abuelita. But, like, all of them, I think, were very overbearing. Yeah. yeah. But, like, I feel like that's just how it was. Yeah. You it's know? just one of those things. I think so, because I think they... I mean, they didn't know better. I always think that now. Like, I'm like, I'm... Not that I'm glad my grandma died, but I'm yeah. like, I'm glad she died in a time where I wasn't able to disappoint her yet. I'm the- it's just so because I think of funny. all the things I did in high school and I'm like, my grandma would have hated me now. She's rolling in her grave right now. But- yeah, like, but that's too late. Like, I have a good memory now, like, of my grandma, you know. If I would have done the things and sh- that I did and yeah. she was still around, I think our relationship would have been very strained. That's right. hard. Yeah, so that's I'm, hard. I'm thankful that my grandma. Rest in peace, grandma. Yeah, rest in peace, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> miss you. Miss <laughs> you. Do you have a lot of cousins? Oh my gosh, so many. Yeah, do you but get along with them? I do, but I I don't know. Well, you guys are young, but like all of everyone, all my cousins that are my age, they're all married or they have kids. Yeah. So I feel like I'm the weird prima, like esa prima de Los Angeles that like is just like La loca. very strange. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm that archetype in my family. I love, I love that. Those I love are the best. That. Honestly, I genuinely agree with that. It's the best person to be in the family, to be yeah. honest. Do you feel like your family treated you different once you started having your business or started talking about you more? You know how it goes? Yeah, I feel like they're all very supportive. I feel like some of them like have no idea what I do. They're just like, I stand on Instagram. But um <laughs> doing God knows what. But I think um I joke like I feel like I'm the golden child in my family because I just give my parents a lot to share on Facebook, you know? Oh. I, so like that's why I'm just the favorite. Yeah, yeah, you I, know? Felt that. I felt that. So yeah, they love it though. They're big fans. Do you have like little cousins that like kind of look up to you? I don't know. No. Maybe. I feel like mm, 
it's funny because most of my family is in like Mexico mm. and so I feel like some of the stuff that I do like they don't really get it because so yeah. much of what you have the mother is it's like very Spanglish and like culturally mm-hmm. culturally confused ass mm-hmm. like Latino shit yeah and I feel like it, it just doesn't resonate with them as much like they want to wear Hollister you no, know dude, oh, Abercrombie I, you know I how it is that, I get that so much that's hilarious <laughs> yeah. it's like the cousins I had here were trying so hard to like be like represent. Yes. Like I have, like I have a cousin who um it was born here, but she tells people she was born in Mexico. Like that's how hard she wants to ride from Mexico. And it's like, okay, girl, do you? But the cousins we have over there, like you said, they want to wear a Hollister. They want us to give them all, all of our clothes from over here. Yeah. That's like from like brands and shit. It's like, damn, like what's going on? But I think um what I like about your brand is that it's very like Latin like latin american you know because of that that you want to be you feel like because you live here but your ethnicity is you know um, hispanic or latino or whatever um you don't really you're like well where do i belong the most so i think that's what i like about your brand that it's it's very inclusive to like latinos living in america that want to appreciate their culture but don't necessarily know how because you go to mexico and then like you said they're like oh well you're an osawa kid like Mm -hmm. you you don't really know i have a cousin who tells me that a lot like they're like oh well you don't really know what mexico's like because you don't live here and i'm like yeah i only Bitch. spend every summer here but I, that's sure so annoying. Oh, i throw hands with those cousins <laughs> it's so frustrating well i don't know if you guys have had this experience but it's like it really gets to your confidence like being a little kid and like somebody makes fun of you for your spanish mm. or like you're not mexican enough or you're like you're not latina enough or american yeah. enough it's mm-hmm. like all of that carries into adulthood yeah and it like affects your self-confidence you know and I feel like low key, like hija tu madre. I feel like we're in the business of like healing childhood trauma, Aww. you know, like because it's like I think a lot of us have been made felt like we're not enough, yeah. or you're not yeah. this, yeah. or you're not that, yeah. or like you have to overachieve because yeah. you came, like your parents came here, and it, and right. I feel like it puts a lot of pressure, you know, like it, and I think that's what is inspiring about you so much that you know you're a Latina woman, you know you're. Your parents come from, you know, a little pueblito in Mexico and you're doing such something so grand because I feel like creating a company like that, it leaves a mark on, you know, on the world. Like, I don't want to sound corny or whatever, but it's it's something that's going to stay here, you know, hopefully in a long time when when you pass. I think it's something that's going to stay and it's going to stick because so many people resonate with you. And that's exactly. that's really amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, trying. I went off right now. No. And I see that you've actually worked with like other like big artists. You know, is there anyone any that stand out to you? They're just like, oh, shit, like, you know, this artist like or is this celebrity or is this influencer or this person that I really just had yeah. the pleasure of working with or it's so crazy like i feel like sometimes the people that have like repped our stuff i'm like i don't even know how you found us like i think like jessica alba bought a bunch of our stuff one time that's fucking it was just like so random out of nowhere um there's this girl her name's jess and she's on my block the actress jessica garcia i don't know but she wears our hoops on the show and then she wears her sorry she wears our hoops like outside like in real life too oh my goodness so yeah just like stuff like that where it's like dang we're on netflix yeah cool. is she the one with curly hair i don't think so no I don't, I don't oh you're thinking of is her name julisa i don't know their names i'm gonna have to look it up now because i saw that see. becky g follows you have you guys oh yeah have you guys ever had like um does she i don't buy something or she just not you guys yet just follow? we um i've supported so i think she has like a makeup brand and i've like gone to like support her brand in the past um so i met her she's really cute oh. um but yeah that's sweet no. it is the girl i thought i was thinking about by yeah the way. it's um jessica marie yes yes Mm-hmm. yeah she's actually my favorite character on all my blog she's oh, so that's cute so, that's, and, like, i haven't seen that show is no it good? it's 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 good i like it i'm not gonna lie i do it is corny as hell because that you know that scene where they speak spanish yeah it really took a hit i'm not gonna lie it really really discredited the uh, i guess authenticity of it wait what was the drama they were like yelling at a baseball game and or a, a game or something and they're like something something te voy a pegar en la boca or something like that and i was like oh man that's that's gonna hit hard it went viral yeah it was i I think they ended up killing her off because (laughs) she was just and because you know what i actually think she was a trumpy 
Oh, like, okay. she was just not fitting the vibes of the, you know, like, she was, like, playing a Latina, and she's over here kind of, like, against everything right. Latino. So I think they, they, they ended up killing her off. Oh, thank God. Because yeah. I've never seen the show, but I saw that viral clip of her, that was, and I was just like, thank God I've never seen it. Like, <laughs> I'm so happy. Other than that, because it's corny. I mean, it's a Netflix show. It's corny. I try to watch things and be like, okay, this is going to be a corny. Like, I watched um, The Summer I Turned Pretty last night. It's corny. Like, it's for, you know, younger audiences. But it's pretty good. And the guys are... Wait, I have to ask. Have you guys seen Love on the Spectrum? No. no. Can you please go home and watch yeah. it and then call me? Please? <laughs> it is so good. What is it about? Um, it's literally, it, like people that are on the spectrum, like dating. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It is so good. Yeah. And I feel like some of the cast members are low key from the IE too. <laughs> oh, like they shit. filmed in like Redlands and stuff. Oh, wow. like, what? what the hell? Yeah. But what is it like? Um, I guess. It profiles um, like a bunch of young people that are like on the spectrum, diagnosed on the spectrum, and they they're like on different levels or different places on the spectrum, mm. and they just like go on dates, they go speed dating, they like meet people on Tinder, and it just like profiles the whole journey. Some of it's kind of cringe, I'm not gonna lie, but it is so <laughs> like touching. Yeah, I saw that. Watch. Like I see clips of it, and people are like, "Oh my god, this is so sweet." And I'm like, "I don't, I don't know what this is." And sometimes I feel like weird watching shows like that only yeah. because i'm like oh like am i expl- am i like exploiting right. them right now right but it's like little people like this just it's it's good shows it's <laughs> entertainment have you seen little people i've seen like one or two they're funny yeah they're funny honestly like there's one where they throw them off the boat and i'm sorry that's just oh my that's god that's just really funny to me it could have oh been anyone god. being thrown off a boat but i yeah, don't know yeah. um what's it on it's on Netflix. Oh. It's so good. I feel like Netflix is really just throwing anything out there. Like, <laughs> the one, Are You the One is weird as hell. We, Love is blind. Have you seen Are You the One? No. I've seen Are You the One. It's so stupid. It's pretty much like 12 people and like they, the creators have already decided who their couple is and they just have to find it. And they end up, like, falling in love in, like, two weeks. And they're like, no, like, it has to be you. And then it's not. And they start, like, crying. Yeah. And they get money in the end. So they have an incentive to find their actual couple. right, right, right. You know? So each week, like, they send, like, a couple into, like, this machine that determines if they're the couple or not. So it's, like, it's very... Wait, a machine... It looks like a room. Oh, okay. Like, like, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. And then there's like a whole like, <laughs> jump, you know? You know what I mean? No, literally. Oh, my but God. then it's when, is it, don't they, aren't they not allowed to, like fuck or anything like that either what yes they do <laughs> no they do but they're not allowed to oh is that another one that's a different it's one it's a different one huh yeah oh that is, is that love one. is blind or something i think that one's love island love uh, island, love okay. island? I, yeah i love that one i thought that was so funny like because they're putting a bunch of hot singles on an island bomb as fuck for like a whole summer and you can't have sex like what? i honestly think they're just like the horniest people <laughs> and they're like you're going on the island <laughs> yes. don't fuck no literally that's exactly what they did would you be on a reality show if they might to do? Yes. <laughs> I, would I will too. pick a fight. I will start the drama. <laughs> Call me. I will be the bad one. Like, what's her name from Selling Sunset? She's like really bad and evil. Oh my god. I will be her. That's amazing. I will be white Tina her. Just let me have it, please. <laughs> please. Yeah, I honestly like I remember growing up and realizing that all these reality TV shows were like not real. And I was like, I was like, no way. Like I one hundred percent believed it. I, I started watching the Kardashians like way oh in the God. beginning. And I was like, this is amazing. Like I can't believe they're giving us this intel on their life. And then yeah. when it was like, oh, it's fake, I was like, How could this be fake? Like Adrian and Rob were like meant to be forever. Oh my gosh, throwback. Yeah. Like I watched it way in the beginning. I was a Kardashian fan way, way, way back when. Wait, have y'all seen like the last like the new one i haven't no I have, I okay have, i've seen it girl tell thing. me why when kim passed the bar i like low-key cried like what <laughs> am i doing crying for this billionaire i was so emotional like I'm she did dead. that wait so she's a lawyer i guess yes yeah she's an attorney now actually really mm-hmm. yeah because there's a difference i barely learned recently the difference between a lawyer and an attorney uh-huh, what's the so. difference so i guess a lawyer um can like 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 they can no attorney and an attorney can only represent so if you're an attorney you can go to court and represent someone but if you're a lawyer you can like help with legal stuff but you can't like represent like in court i don't know how to explain it something like that what? it was weird let's look at it there's, there's some difference i could be wrong but there's a difference i didn't even yeah. know she was taking i don't know any i try to like 
not pay attention to them because then I'm like very easily influenced. Yeah. Difference. Um, what's it called, girl? The Tristan drama. I felt so bad for Chloe. Like, could you believe yeah, this yeah. man is over here like trying for her, saying that he changed and all this shit, and he cheated on her from the party that she threw for him, bro. She threw him a thirtieth. Was it thirtieth? His thirtieth birthday. So. It was his thirtieth birthday party. She did it for him. And he left the party to go cheat on her. That's Can you so believe this man? I can't. I can't. If Chloe, gets, Chloe, if you get back with that man, I'm sorry. I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad for you. If you get <laughs> I don't back feel bad not one bit. I'm sorry, but like, should learn the first time. That's tough. Especially on national television. Come on. <laughs> I feel like honestly, like famous people are crazy because. Like, this is so public. I don't think I'd be able to recover from that. I honestly yeah. don't. Yeah, that's tough. Because now she's always going to be known of, like, oh, remember Tristan? Like, oh. Dude, and that's the hard part about putting yourself out there in general, like, having a platform. Mm-hmm. It's like everyone feels like, shoot, I know I've been judging people left and right and have a platform. <laughs> everyone, like, including me. Everyone, including me. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting off my high horse, but I'm just saying that like, it's hard putting yourself out there. I mean, even us, we've learned that, you yeah. know, but having this podcast, I'm pretty sure you've learned right. it too, having your business. Like, everyone just feels like they can say anything and everything. And it's tough. You have to grow yeah. thick skin. You have to realize, like, damn, like, okay, like, it's not, like, don't take it personal, you know, because at the end of the day, they don't know me. You know what I mean? Do y'all, and like, read all the comments? Or, like, what's your relationship with, like, the negative feedback? Um, I think at first we would read like every, every single comment <laughs> and it, I think it, it was affecting us obviously was, really negatively. And then Saul is the one who was like, don't read, read them. Yeah. And I took me a long time not to, because it's true. They like nitpick at your yeah. biggest insecurities Everything. that you're like, no one notices. And then they do it. They and you're do. like, fuck, you know it. fuck you. Yeah. So then you kind of get really self-conscious, but I think now like that's what we've learned that most people don't read their comments, so we just stop. We, wow. Especially TikTok's comments. Like I mean, like I feel like yeah. YouTube they take it a little easy on us, but you know TikTok's fucking ruthless, bro. Like there's no <laughs> yeah. filter. Like TikTok is like the new t- 2010 Twitter era. Yeah. Like everyone's just out of pocket on that app. Like they don't give a fuck. And and like we, I think what we learned too is that like people on TikTok they don't they're not like really fans. Exactly. It's just more like it came up on there. They're for you, so they. Just like, yeah. and I think it's always funny. Like they watch like a little snippet, and they say, "Oh well, like they, well, why didn't they this or, this or that?" And I'm like, "Bitch, if you would have watched the whole fucking episode, you would have seen mm, that we did say yeah. that, we did mention that." And it's like they just get all yeah. riled up with one freaking ten second video. And I'm like, "Damn." Do you feel like, um, like has anyone ever made a comment that like really hurt your like your because it's your know your baby like your company? Did you do you feel like it, there was ever a time where you were like, "Damn, like why am I even doing this?" Yeah. Um. I think there was one comment that was like so out of pocket. So I, w- I went to like a rally. I think this was also like early. Maybe this was like 2017, 2016. Like I went to like a like one of those like get Trump out of office rallies. Oh. And I had like some crazy sign. And I remember someone commenting like, um, I just called um, ice on you and your whole family. Like, oh, shit. you know, like you should be careful. Like you should watch out. <gasps> And I just thought that was so like I've I could take all like the crazy comments and the yeah. rude comments, but to say some crazy shit like yeah, that yeah, is that's so wild. wild. As fuck. Can yeah. I ask you? I don't know if this is too personal, but no. because you're like of lighter skin, have you ever gotten like negative comments about that? I think I used to feel very insecure about it. Like maybe when I got into college, like mm-hmm. very insecure. Because I'm like, everybody thinks I'm white. I'm a white girl. Everyone thinks I'm white, but I'm Mexican. And I think I used to low-key make, like, a little pity party for myself. But then, like, coming to realize, like, well, all of Univision, all of, like, Telemundo, all the telenovela actors literally look like me and my family. So, like, I don't know. I think it was kind of, I got maybe, like, a rude awakening on, like, what colorism is right um but i think sometimes people like don't understand colonization literally and i'm like this is just this is yeah i look like this because of history right you know exactly I, mean? and I can't change it yeah yeah, yeah yeah and i feel like that um especially in the hispanic like world like you shouldn't be you shouldn't feel bad about it like that's right. literally how you were born. Like, what the fuck do you want me to do now? Exactly. You know? Right. And exactly. I think, too, though, my family is very, like, I'm brown, but I have a cousin who's literally, like, white, green eyes and blonde. 
you know, like it has everything. So I think I never noticed that until like now in this day and age where it's so like, wow. oh, well, you're, you know, you're not, you don't know what it's like, but it's like, oh yeah, but I understand it because I've seen it and I, I'm like around it. You know what I mean? So I was like wondering that, but I didn't want to like, no, I guess, come off please. in a negative way. No, please. I love these conversations though. Cause I feel like, I don't know. Did you guys ever grow up too? Or like. There are certain primos in the family that would get like the preferential treatment porque eran like más blanquitos or like this or that. I feel like I grew up seeing a lot of that type of stuff. I don't think so. Only because I was never that close to my dad's family. And for the most yeah. part, they're all pretty morenitos and like, like some of them are like, like straight hair and yeah. like really chinky eyes and others like curly hair and whatever. Um, I think what I noticed in more was in body types. Mm. Yes. That's what I was gonna yeah. Like my family is very, from one side, they are very like, like big tits. I obviously I'm not from that part. <laughs> but like, um, then the other one is like, Oh, like big, huge asses. And oh some of them gosh. are really skinny. So it was more so like with body. Yeah. But I guess body dysmorphia. No, literally, same same with my family. It was like the thinner people were like more more attention, more mm -hmm. comments, and the people that were on the bigger weight were like, yeah. you know, never acknowledged and shit like that, which is sad. Or very much wow. like pointed out. Like I yeah. remember when I was seven, um, I literally looked like I do right now. Like you sit and you obviously get rolls. And it like really stuck with me because I was just chilling like on a little motito, you know, and at, by the beach. And like I turn and like all my cousins are like laughing at my rolls. And I, I didn't know that I had them until literally that moment. And I think that's when I became like so self-conscious about it. So um, I think that was the more of the struggle rather than because even like my yeah. cousin who was like lighter, she was always thinner and she had like really thin body and stuff. So I think that was more of the struggle growing up. There's no, something. Really to be said about like latino families like always commenting on like bodies mm -hmm. yeah. or like there's like la flaca la gorda yeah. la gordita yeah. and like they turn like insecurities into like a term of endearment yeah. or yeah, something yeah, yeah. like yes. so twisted it's you know so no yeah weird. and that's what i told them in another episode my dad used to call me prieta color de llanta <laughs> Oh my God. How in God's name is that a term of endearment, sir? Like how? And so everyone notices it. And your parents, I don't think your parents, for the most part, don't do it in a malicious way. But yeah. they, I feel like they point it out to everyone else. And then right. they're like, oh, this is my opening. I'm, I le voy a tirar, you know? It's hard. It's hard. Oh, no, my God. <laughs> it's a tear. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, Did you it's get, like, funny. crap for, like, your orange hair? Um... I don't think so. This was this is low key breakup hair, hair and I just kind of like stuck with it for years. Oh my nice. Goodness. So Can we it's talk like, about that? Um, yeah, I was like in a relationship, mm -hmm. and um, we were together for a very long time, like many years. Yeah. And we broke up, and I like he like moved out, so like the apartment was mine now, and like mm. I'm by myself, and oh, I need to change my hair, obviously, because that's yeah, what you do yes, when you go exactly. through a breakup. Literally. Um, and it kind of just stuck. I think it's been like three or four years. Oh, wow. This is who I am now. And you've stayed orange? Yeah. Do I'm like scared to change. I feel like it's so tied to like, mm. um, this is going to sound stupid, but like SEO, like when people Google you or like look up anything about the brand, it's like me and orange hair. So I'm like, Ugh, I have to stick yeah, with it. Okay. It looks good, though. I like it. How, um, how often do you wash it? Girl, like once a week, honestly. Oh, that's not bad. If anything. Yeah. That's not bad. I wash my hair every like two weeks. Really? But I have curly hair. Oh, my god. So gosh. I try and I'm gone a curly hair journey right now. So I try not to wash it. And that's why I'm always like in buns or like slick because after, so if I'm in a bun, you know, I haven't washed my hair in a while because it starts to like flatten. So I just brush it and I keep it in a bun. And then wow. I just forget how long it's been. And then one day I'll let it down and I'm like, oh yeah, I need to wash it now. But I, t I take like two weeks to wash <laughs> so my hair. So what is it like when, what does wash day look like for you? Is it like a whole day? Yeah, it's so long. Like it takes forever because you have to wash it. And since you haven't washed it in so long, I don't know if you guys know this, but you're supposed to wash like your roots and then you don't get suds right at the beginning because your hair is dirty. Uh, so you have to do like three washes. This is for curly hair. I'm sure colored hair is different but yeah so you have to do like three four washes and once you get the little suds that means it's clean and then you have to do a treatment at least mine i do a treatment and then i have to brush it out in the shower and then i have to put all the products in the shower because if not it's like really really frizzy and huge so it honestly takes me like an hour and a half on wash day to just be in the shower wow. so Imagine having to do that shit two times a week, three times a week. Like, that sounds miserable. So I'd rather just, what I just forget. Suds? 
Like Sides the out. little foam, like the like the spuma. When it gets bubbly or soapy. Yeah. You said it takes three washes to get it out your hair? Yeah, because if you don't wash your hair often and then you put the shampoo in no se hace espuma, it just means that it's not clean yet. Oh, that okay. is so good to know. Yeah, I actually I learned that no on um, Nintendo DS Pets. <laughs> Because it wouldn't get says until my dog was clean. <laughs> That's <laughs> swear to God. <laughs> Had a little golden lab and he died. All my Nintendo dogs died. I'm oh sorry. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's crazy. Little fun fact for you guys. So <laughs> Wait, so do you use like a di uh, diffuser or like what's that attachment called? Yeah, um, I don't. I just don't know how to use it. And again, that would be like another 20, 15 minutes. <laughs> I do. I do like I dry it with like a, yeah. a cotton towel and then I'll wrap it. I don't know how to wrap it either. So I'll just grab a click and cr clip and then clip it right here. And then I just kind of let it dry. But I always let it air dry. That is so cool. Sorry, going back to the boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. Oh, yeah, yeah, when, yeah. When he saw you, like, doing good, you know, running your little <laughs> business and everything, did he want to come back? Um, I think we probably both did. You know how it is when you get, when you're, like, dating somebody for so many years and they, yeah. like, become your family? Yeah. And you just got to get back together at least two or three times. <laughs> it's, like, how it goes. <laughs> Is it I the feel, boyfriend you have right now? No, no, no. Oh, no. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that's, it's so hard ripping the Band-Aid off, like, yeah. those long-term relationships. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. How long have you been with your boyfriend right now? This one, almost, his name's Daniel, almost a year. Oh, okay. Oh, so yeah. Going strong, going strong. We're going strong. Does he, um, does he ever feel, like, intimidated by you? Because you're, you know, a girl boss. A girl boss. I don't think so. He's very helpful. Like, oh. right now, he's probably at my warehouse helping us put together some Aww. stuff. So he's very supportive and like shows up for all the little things I need. Oh, that's he's amazing. Really sweet. That. Do yeah, you feel like because you know you're successful, like was it hard to kind of pick someone who was gonna be able to like match that energy? Yes and no. I think for a long time I was like, I'm a girl boss, so I need to date like the quote unquote like boss male type. Mm -hmm. Like one of those like suits. Mm -hmm. He's like super yeah. rich, um, but like it turns <laughs> out to be like it's. I feel like the dating pool for women is like really hard right now because like women are like historically more successful than men than we've ever been. Like mm -hmm. more degrees, more career moves, and so it's really hard. So I feel like I kind of changed my values. I'm like, okay, I'm not so much interested in somebody who ha who's a workaholic like me because like I can't. I can't date myself. Right. Okay. So I think like looking for somebody who shares like the same weird fucking shit that I'm into. Yeah. Who's mm -hmm. about nature and hugs trees and Aww. is Latino. So I don't know. I feel like I had to change my values because I just like wasn't happy trying to date other workaholics. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Where'd yeah. you meet Daniel? Girl on Hinge. Shout out to Hinge. <laughs> oh my yeah. God, I have to hop on there. I've been hearing a lot lately that people are meeting the love of their lives on these apps. No, seriously. Well, because that's what it's for. I mean, it's, I think dating, like trying to date someone in person now, like yeah. just kind of going up to them, it's kind of like, oh, that guy went up to me. I and want, on Hinge, you know, you're there for that purpose. I want to right. meet someone like that organically, you know, like at the store, you know, someone <laughs> that just comes up to me and it's like, hey, I love your dress. Like, you know, compliment your eyes or some bullshit i don't know just like you know very much like the romance teen i'm movie. too skeptical man like, like if someone i just watched fresh so yeah. if someone came up to me at the grocery store i'm like oh you probably eat girls like get the fuck away from <laughs> me. Dead. like you're probably trying to human traffic me right now don't talk to me and i would have thought oh my god i met him at the grocery store that means he's about to make like a fucking gourmet meal at home and he wants to cook for me like literally that's like my mentality hell no um, but you know what like i i feel like i did definitely used to have like a negative like light on like apps you know because mm -hmm. i think oh everyone mm -hmm. just wants to fuck and no one really cares about actually meeting someone that they you know want to fall in love with but you know what i think i'm being persuaded to just do it do, do, it. It. do, it. I'm gonna do it wait so are you dating right now no no i'm a mom i don't yeah. know if you heard. I heard so i feel like it's hard for me well for it's been for a long time hard to kind of just because i still hang out with my baby daddy a lot like friends but it's just like damn even though i say we're friends like that's definitely it's the lines are blurred i guess when it comes to how i feel like oh am i ready to date am i ready to not date but lately i do feel like i've been feeling ready i just feel like i just haven't taken the jump but i feel like if i were to meet someone organically and they me mueven el tapete like i'm there like i'm ready right. you know but um but i i feel like i'm 
I want to shoot my shot, you know? Like, I want to start being that girl that goes after, like, what she wants, you know? So... Do it. Go on him. I'm going to do it. I might. What do you... Uh, have you guys been on any other apps besides... I used to be on Tinder when me and my manskies were broken up, but I honestly would just go on to laugh at people because really? guys fun. will put the most hilarious things. I... <laughs> the funniest one, I recorded it, was this guy and he was lifting and his penis was over the bar. Oh And that gosh. was one of his pictures. Like, why in God's <laughs> name would you put that? Like... What is going through your brain, man? <laughs> That's hilarious. It was so I, so. Guys would put stuff like that, and I would just think it was so funny. So I never actually dated on it. I just went on to like. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just went on to laugh at men. That's hilarious. <laughs> She's so like, Alex looking mad at me. Yeah, he Wait, was very upset. I want to know what is your type, Vanessa. What my are you looking for? Honestly, I feel like at this point in my life, you know, I want. A man that's going to be attentive, you know, mm. someone that pays attention to the little things, you know, someone definitely now that I have a son, also someone that's going to take my son into consideration and love him and not, you know, I don't need a father, you know, he has a dad, you know, but someone obviously I'm interested in a partner that's obviously going to value my son just as much as like they value me. Like that's definitely mm-hmm. now something that's important to me. I refuse to be like one of those like freaking moms that like gets a boyfriend and then just like leaves their child to the yeah. side, you know, like I hate. That shit grinds my gears. Um, definitely someone that communicates, someone that's very emotionally aware of how their emotions and their trauma plays out and how they are in a relationship. Mm. So I need the self-awareness to be there for sure. Because I've dated men. Well, not dated, but men have approached me a lot recently. And I entertain it just because I want to see how they think. And I'm sorry, but the self... Not, I don't want to judge, you know, everyone's on a different journey, but the self-awareness, like, it's not there. Like, there's still very much... I, but I think it's not mm-hmm. about judging, you know? Like, I um, I feel like I, I hear that a lot where it's like, oh, I don't want to judge, but it's more of like, you know yeah. what you want and yeah. you shouldn't have to apologize. Like, even people yeah. that are like, oh, like, I want to date someone with money. Like, why yeah. should you apologize for wanting to date someone yeah. who's, you know, yeah. already right. well kind off. of... Yeah, yeah well off. Not like, struggling. Yeah, and if mm-hmm. you, like, if you don't, then that's cool, but yeah. I do. Yeah, and exactly. I, I notice a lot of women apologizing for That's asking true. for what we they want. That's true. We fucking shouldn't. Mm. Yeah. Because yes, I guess like just that, you know, I loyal. Well, you got any friends for my friends? Loyal. I will. You know, go off. <laughs> you put it out there. Make, make a profile for me. I got you. <laughs> also, like, that's so cool that you said that about awareness. Because I feel like if you're going into a relationship with this awareness and someone is not it's, there, yes. it's like a learning curve. Like, they're, it's not, they're not going to be there mm-hmm. with you yeah. exactly. anytime soon. Exactly. And, I, and that's what I meant, like, when men have approached me recently. And, like, I entertain conversations just to kind of see, like, where their minds at, you know, how they speak to me, how they carry themselves you know uh and i don't know maybe that's just the man i attract but it's not (laughs) there you know so i've just kind of been holding off on you know meeting people because we could never get past that like okay yeah let me talk to you like through text or even on the phone like let me see your vibe and it's just not there for me anymore it would have done it for me before my son i'd be like fuck yeah you're hot like that's all i care about you know like let's go out but it just it doesn't do it for me anymore i'm just like i feel like i'm definitely caring about more like personality and things like that yeah as opposed um to. did you date a lot like on hinge before meeting your boyfriend i wouldn't say a lot but like a couple you know dates here a couple there. situations couple free meals every now and then um it's hard because like i mentioned it's like i think my priority for the longest time was like my business so like dating somebody that is like very respectful mm-hmm. of like your hustle okay. and your other priorities i feel like that's hard yeah everyone yeah. feels entitled to like want to mm-hmm. have a lot of your time yeah that's a hard one i've noticed in dating especially you get in a relationship and they just want to be all up on your ass like 24 right. 7 but it, it is hard especially dating like with like my my husband just bought a company and i don't really see him that often so it, it's i feel like if this was like maybe in a different time i would have been like what the hell like right. why aren't you giving me the time of day yeah. but if you don't have a company i think it's hard to know how much goes into it and how much you have to work for it you yourself because i feel like it's so easy to be like oh we'll hire someone and it's like like mm-hmm. um i think i saw one of your interviews where you were like no one's gonna care about your business the way you care about your business mm. and if you don't have one it's kind of hard to kind of um understand that kind yeah, of perspective right. yeah definitely. do you see yourself like working with him no only because <laughs> um, 24 7 every day yeah i want to open my i want to open a restaurant so his is That's construction cool. and i i think we have to very different like he even says like oh i want to help you with the restaurant i'm like mm, <laughs> I'm i don't good. know yeah because i i don't his company is just him like he doesn't yeah. he it doesn't really require i guess much um 
talking to people and I don't think he realizes how rude and mean people can be. Mm. And since I've worked with my parents in their restaurant, I, I kind of know. And it would be, I think, stressful for me to kind of teach him that. Maybe he could be like my accountant or something. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't think I would. He wants me to. He wants me to be like his secretary so we spend more time together. But I'm like, oh I don't like being on a desk. Right. Like, that's just not for me. Do you think it's also, like, a boundary thing? Because now it's, like, you guys are, like, in all each other's parts of your lives. Yeah, so, since you're married now? Kind of. Because you want to include them in everything, but you also want to have something that's yours. Yeah. Um. So I think it's... And it's hard to kind of get the other person to understand that without hurting their feelings. Like, no, I don't want you in this. Because mm. then they're like, why? Like, aren't we supposed to do everything together? Which mm. is true, but I think sharing is more fun when like or funner when you get home and you're like oh how was your day at work rather than seeing each other all day and then going right. home and maybe you had a stressful day at work and i'll hear this he's fucking in my bed and i have to right. see him again you know wow yeah. and that's my perspective but i've always been very um like i try to keep things for me mm. like he doesn't gym and everyone's like oh why don't you just invite him to gym i'm like but he doesn't like it and i'm not gonna yeah. force him. and it's kind of my place to go and like i think it's That's important healthy, to have yeah. alone time i don't think ev- your partner should be in everything that you do yeah like, i definitely think it's important to still be your own person have your own things that don't involve him in and i think it keeps like the not like magic alive but it keeps you sharing things that exactly rather than i noticed like a lot of couples that spend so much time together they don't really have anything like interesting to talk talk about about. exactly and that's actually one of i I don't know if you guys have ever seen the podcast um on purpose by jay shetty Mm. and i love him and he was talking about one of the biggest and most important things you can do for your relationship to keep flourishing and growing Mm -hmm. is doing things individually um um so that you guys can come together and then have new things to share because yeah. you're growing individually as a person so you're constantly meeting your partner as a new version of them because right. they're, they're doing their own thing so you guys come together and share more things and share more things and you guys grow like that mm-hmm. so it's like so it true. makes sense as opposed to if you do everything together it's like well what can i you were with me all day what, yeah. what do i tell you i like, always think of or yeah. like when they're constantly calling i'm like Please stop calling me. Like, I'm literally going to see you at the end of the day. I don't have anything new to say in the last 15 minutes. Just don't call me anymore. I wonder, too, like, do people forget about self-growth when they're in, like, a committed relationship? Like, you just forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, people lose it, I think. Definitely. It's, and it's more of, like, because, especially in the beginning, you're so, like, I want to be with this person all the time. So you get so used to that that you forget that maybe there's outside factors that you should right. also explore rather than just getting so tied up because and then that's why end, people end up alone because right. they don't have any friends they left everyone for this person and now they don't really have anywhere to go off and then they spiral and yeah it all goes to shit or then like it happens that like they're you're in a relationship and then y- you might spend all your time together and then one of them wants to start doing things by themselves yeah. like with their friends and then the other person's like well what about me and it's like girl like go do your own thing then right, or, yeah. like, you know what i mean and it's like it's hard because that, that's happened to me <laughs> it's like i was dating someone and I, we were like together 24 7 and then they were like okay well like i want to start going out with my friends and like i just you know boys night you know do things like alone mm-hmm. without you and i'll get so butthurt i'd be like why can't i go like, <laughs> i know them <laughs> and it's hard so definitely one thing that i've learned also is like and now that I've been alone since I've been single and I don't now doing my own thing, I can now see how being alone and having things for yourself and alone time definitely would help the relationship rather than like hurting it. You yeah. know, because a lot of people see it as yeah. bad to like not be with their partner all the time. But does um sorry, this is completely off topic, but it came to mind when you said about boys night. Does, is your team consistent of like boys and like men and women or it's um It's mostly women. Yeah. Which not because like we're only hiring women, but I think it's just like the brand, oh, like just like right. appeals to yeah. women. Um, but I do have an operations manager who's male, so yeah. I Does it like- get like ever overwhelming because it's so much like feminine energy? <laughs> I don't know. I have to ask him. I'm, I'm actually not sure. I'm afraid actually to know. I don't know if I want he's to like, hear. I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> actually, I quit. takes out a notepad. <laughs> yeah, he's for sure like the minority. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Give him a little taste of. Wait, is it a taste of your own medicine? Yeah. yeah. What we feel every day. Yeah. Right. Bastards. Mm-hmm.
All right, guys. We're about to play a little okay. game. It's okay. called Tragos, a party game for Latinos. So let's get into it. We should have gotten alcohol. Ah! Oh, you have know. alcohol? All right. First one. If you don't know who Fulano de Tal or Mengano is, take four sips. <laughs> four sips. I do know. Oh, my God. I do know. I've actually never heard of Mengano. Have y'all heard of I've that? heard of Mengano, but I... <laughs> you lying. <laughs> Liars. <laughs> you have <laughs> sentence right now. <laughs> I'm dead. I haven't heard Mengano, but you I'm, know what? But you heard Fulano de Tal. My viewers already know that I'm a liar at heart, <laughs> so if I see I could get away with it, I'm going to lie. That's true. That's true. Mengano. I wonder what that is. Okay. No, not this one. <laughs> If you say carajo or coño at least once a day, take three sips. I don't. I, I don't do say, not that. say that. I don't say that. But I think carajo is more like um, lower um, Central, America. Central America. Yeah. Yeah. Finish this saying. Calladita te ves más bonita. bonita. Ah. Winner takes a sip. <laughs> <laughs> Me, you said it, baby. You, thank God. That's so cute. All right. Take turns naming telenovela plot twist. Whoever repeats an answer or takes too long takes five sips. I don't remember any of plot the twist? telenovela plot twist. Did you guys ever watch Cuidado con el Ángel? Yes. No. That plot twist was no. so stupid, though. Yeah, it was. There's, they were like, it was like this um, poor girl, obviously, yeah. on the street. And she meets this guy and they fall in love. But she goes to work for his grandma. Yeah. And then they end up falling in love. And then at some point during the novela, they're like, you guys are siblings. Stop. And I was like, what? No way. Like, they wait, probably... Wait. What? Are you sure that's the right plot? Oh, no, I'm sorry. You know what I'm talking about? Al Diablo con los Guapos. Yes, girl. <laughs> my bad. My yeah, bad. Plot twist. Con el Angel, that's the one where the bitch goes blind. Yes, with William Levy. Yes. Okay, so the sorry, plot twist sorry, in sorry. this is that she is like poor, same, and she has like a laundry like business with her grandma where they wa wash rich people's clothes, and she goes to this house, and she, William Levy's house, mm -hmm. and they fall in love, but this girl actually and one night, like, this drunken guy raped her or something. And it comes out that William Levy raped her. So it was He was a drunken guy. After she falls in love with him, it comes what? out that he was the one that did that. So she it, they had, like, a huge fallout. But later it came to be that it wasn't him that raped him. It was his best friend. They were out, both out on that night drinking. And his best friend raped the girl. But he knocked him out to make him think that it was him that did it. Oh. Does that make sense? So, like, you know, and then, so, like, it's just... I want to speak to wow. the writers at Univision. It was, what the hell? It was really... It, it was something. So it was something. And then there was a lot of plot, plot twists on that show. I Did you watch the telenovelas no. growing up? No. I've seen, like, a couple of, like, um, what's the Guadalupe one? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Guadalupe. yeah, I have a primo that was on one no of the episodes. No way! Yeah, shout out to him. Um, but, yeah, they're so bad. Like, all the they're writing... No, you know which one's good? You should watch it. Teresa's good. Um... Teresa's really good, Rubid's good, but they're the same plot. And then there's another one called um, Lo que la vida me robó. And I think that one, it was on Netflix. I don't know if it's still on there. It's so good. That one is good because it's about, um, you know what? I never noticed how much like rape and stuff is in novelas. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, but pretty so much, um, I don't know. They make it, whatever. Um, it's about this girl and her family's going broke. So her mom secretly sells her. Oh and my the guy... God. Like, but the guy's not bad. He just wanted a wife, I guess. He, like, he bought a wife. And she is in love with, like, this Marine dude. And they're going to, like, run away together. But then they don't. And he takes her to live on his hacienda. And he finds out that she was going to run away with the Marine guy. So he, like, like makes her, you know, do the nasty. And this then the Marine guy shows up in the hacienda pretending to be the like someone else and so he starts working there and like making her uncomfortable and then she falls in love i don't know it's so good though i really i think out of all the novelas i recommend that one amor real la madrasa is a good one Ooh. i watch hella novelas bro. damn you know your novelas hell yeah i watch novelas a lot i'm so impressed yeah I'll wait be... are you watching them because your mom is watching them too no. this is all you this is all me i was the one who'd be like mom watch this one it's really good <laughs> i only watched the ones with william levy those were the only ones i was i did not like William Levy like that, like dude. I would. I watched Cuidado con el Ángel, but it didn't um really interest. I told you like Jaime Camil. There's another one called Las Tontas No Van al Cielo. That is a really good one. 
And that one's cool because it's about, oh my God, I'm sorry. I just have so much knowledge about, um, <laughs> Jacqueline Bracamontes is the main character and Jaime Camille, and I forgot the other dude's name, but she's going to marry the other dude. And then he finds, she finds, oh no, she marries him. And then she finds him having, him having sex with her oh sister God. at the wedding. This is too so much. She pretends to die and she moves to Guadalajara. And that's where she meets Jaime Camille. And then, like, it's just unravels from there. 10-10, ten, ten, recommend that one. The crazy thing is that I'm pretty sure, like, shit like this has happened in real life. Like, Dude, I honestly don't doubt it. I always tell my cousins to, like, write a book on their life so <laughs> someone can make it into a novella because they be going through some shit. Right. Yeah. Anyways, right, that's, uh, that's all so for today, sorry. Telemundo. Thank if you. If your family ever filled up the dish soap with more water than soap, take two sips. Okay. <laughs> that's me, not even my family. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> if your family ever used product containers as Tupperware, take three sips. Oh, my God. Oh my Cardenas, God. my house is filled with Car- Cardenas Tupperware. Mm. Uh. Mom. If you ever had a quinceañera, take four sips. If you ever went to one, take two sips. I think this shit is to get you fucked up. Did you have a quinceañera? I had a sweet 15. Okay. Oh my goodness. And this was like the height of my rockeraness. Um... So I think the whole, it was so embarrassing. The whole night we were like dancing to like some forty one and Blink One Eighty Two and My Chemical Romance, and I was just like, can "Oh you play my so god!" Is? Like, I can you love, stop? Did I fucking love that you were just always like, "I'm gonna be me." Like, I don't care mm-hmm. if you feel uncomfortable. I don't care if this right. isn't your vibe. I don't care if my whole family's here for the corridos and shit, bitch. I'm gonna play what the fuck I want right. to too. I love that. Did you have a dress though? Yeah, I was like hot pink and black, of course. Love that. Of course. Iconic. That's amazing. <laughs> um, I'm not going to do like those. Can I sip just to sip? Yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> if your last name is Rodriguez Fernandez Lopez Garcia Gonzalez, take three sips. <laughs> I made it. Do your hips keep you from fitting into your jeans? If yes, take two sips. Well, it depends what jeans. So I'm going to take one sip. <laughs> <laughs> this one's good it says according to latino parents what is the skill you need in order to get married oh my gosh um cooking yeah oh my god winner like the most basic one mm-hmm. <laughs> winner winner chicken dinner my mom always be like no te sabes ni los calzones y ya quieres tener novio right. oh my god i hate it and she was it in public like what are you saying right now <laughs> and i'd be like miss girl control you, yourself and i'd be like miss girl you've made me wash my own clothes when i was in third grade what the fuck do you mean i don't know how to wash my calzones <laughs> got you uh, we're not gonna do this but pick a player to call their parent and tell them I love you on speaker if they skip they take a shot stop what do you mean if they skip like if they don't want to call their parent to say I love you oh that is so if you've funny. ever been asked to if you speak Mexican take three sips oh <laughs> my god it's asking people if they speak Mexican you've been asked that Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! By Where white people, of course, white people. <laughs> Do you speak Mexican? I actually, I'm shook right now. I've never heard anyone say that. What did you answer? Yes, like <laughs> no. That's so crazy. That sounds it's so, so odd. offensive. Well, do you guys know what sancocho is? No. I think that's like a Dominican dish. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that it's inclusive to. Um, I was actually gonna ask you that. Do you um, do you ever get like? Not hate, but like comments where it's like, oh, why don't you kind of do more like me- Mexican isn't the only Latino culture, stuff like that. Um, I think in the beginning we were very focused on like Mexican stuff because like mm-hmm. I'm Mexican. Yeah. But then um, we started doing like, for example, we have like these necklaces and they're like, the, it's like a nameplate of every Latin American country. Oh, cute. Oh, we have jackets with like a bunch of different Latin American flags on them. So we try to I make space that. for everybody yeah, as that's much awesome. as possible. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Do you, um, oh my God, I'm sorry. My brain went blank. I'm sorry. It's fine. We'll, just, ask we'll keep drinking. <laughs> if your name is Jose Maria Carolina or Alex, <laughs> take two sips. Oh, uh, dude, no. My Alex is, oh, this is my husband's name. His mom, oh, he has. Eight, she has eight sisters or like six, six or eight. They're wow. all Marias. Wow. Like every single person, their name is Maria. Maria, Ven- Ma- Maria Veronica, Maria, like Isabel, like stuff like that. Every single one is Maria. Love that. Okay. Pick a player. On three, both of you call out a food you only eat on Christmas. If you have different answers, both take three sips. Okay. Let's do it. Me and you. 
Don't Actually, mind. let's all do it together. Yeah. On the count of three, we're going to say what we eat on Christmas. It says food you only eat on Christmas. Okay. So if you have different answers, both take three sips. Okay, yeah. ready? One, two, three. Bolillos. Tell me why I was going to say tamales. What, what did you say? I said bolillos. Bolillos? Bolillos. Like bolillos, like the pan? No. Um. Isn't it this other one where it's like a... Or am I saying it wrong? It's like oh, a, buñuelos. 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 Damn. The candy, like good. the sugar I'm one? I'm so sorry, y'all. Huh? Like the sugar ones? Yeah. Those are so Really? They have them good. at the store. Good. But I don't ever eat them unless like it's, Bimbo. like, Christmas. Are you serious? Dude, they used to be, like, my, like, I every time I went to the store, I needed to have, I call them Buñuelos or Buñuelos or something like that. Yeah. Dude, I don't, it's because my my tia makes them homemade, so, like, she makes them, like, on Christmas. I never, I didn't even know they sell them at the store. I only eat tamales dulces on Christmas, though. Really? Like, I eat pollo and like other stuff like that if it's around year round but my mom only makes tamales dulces on on christmas what do you guys eat on thanksgiving are you guys like the turkey family yes i'm not gonna lie we <laughs> we, we did the whole sh- honestly i love 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 like the traditional like ham yeah. turkey mashed potatoes gravy like the stuffing we made mac and cheese this last year mm. also my grandma makes this bomb ass salad that's like um it's like it has like broccoli, like raisins. I know it sounds odd. Apples. Ooh, I know it's terrible. Sounds, I know it does. I know. When she first showed it to me, I was like, this is disgusting. Like, I'm not gonna eat this. <laughs> I don't but, fuck with raisins though. No, I know, but honestly, and it has like want like uh, almonds, bacon. It has like a bunch of weird things, but dude, it works. It was so fucking good. The only thing that's has raisins and uh, I'll usually pick them out is capirotada. I hate oh capirotada. My gosh. You hate it's capirotada? like eighty percent like, like condensed milk, yeah. right? It's just no. like the sweetest thing. It's so like it. good. I'm gonna make y'all some. I've been trying. My mom never like literally this weekend. I called her and I was like, you know what? Oh, send me the birria <laughs> recipe. And she was like, no puedo porque luego te digo que le tanties and you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> like who the fuck is gonna know what you're talking about at that point? Just give me the measurements. She's like, I can't. I have to see. That's why I didn't make birria <laughs> by the way this weekend. You know what, Steph? I'm really hurt because you always say you're gonna make something for us and you never do. Okay, well, first of all, you don't even like bread like that or sweet stuff like that, so I'm not making you capirotada. No, no, don't make me that. I- I'm trying to make birria. It's just I I need access to my mother's brain, and I can't mm. be calling her every second. What do you want? I'll make you anything you want. I want you to make me anything you want. Okay, I'll make you tacos. Go ahead. I actually have shrimp at home. I'll make you that. Okay, God, calm down. Leave me alone. It's because Miss Chef over here, you know, I just have to. I have to start learning how to cook if I want to open my restaurant. I want to be able to cook. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I thought you did know. I do know, but I want to learn, like... The more intricate ones, recipes, huh? Yeah, like the more... Because um, Iberia has so much that goes into it yeah. that... Like, I watch people make birria on, um, on like, TikTok and stuff, and I'm like, that's not how you make it. <laughs> like, I'm going to tell you right now, I know that birria is not good. Like, my <laughs> mom's birria is elite, and I'm never going to post the recipe because it's so just that I, this is years in the making recipe. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So what I, is your dish dish that you go to are proud of that you make? Um... This isn't Mexican, but my chicken alfredo is really good. Really? <laughs> my chicken alfredo is pretty good. I like my caldo de verduras a lot. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. That's so good. Do I make cook? a lot of caldos. Sorry. Do you no. cook? No. I cook, like, the same. I eat, like, breakfast for, like, dinner all the time. Mm. Like, that is my thing. You can never go I wrong love with breakfast, breakfast for all the time. I love breakfast. What's your favorite breakfast meal? I love, 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 like, blueberry pancakes. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. that sweet and, like, salty. Yeah. I love that. Have you tried the Japanese pancakes? <gasps> Wait, I the big them. fluffy ones? Yes. Ah, no. I They're so to. good. There's a place in Chino Hill. Chino Hills? Uh-huh. Chino Hills called Take Your Seat. And oh, it's cool. super good. They okay. have fluffy pancakes. They're so bomb. You want to take I, Let's Hell go. Yeah. Let's go. Honestly, what, is there good places, like, food places um, where you live? Girl, no, because it's like an actual desert. Yeah. So like, it's like state of brothers. How is that? I actually wanted to ask you because <laughs> I always say like I want to go like live out in like nature, probably somewhere where it's like more trees and stuff, but like <laughs> like grass and whatnot. But how is that living out in the desert? You know, is there any pros and cons or something that you like? Yeah. Damn, I didn't think about this. Like, what? 
I really like it. Like, I love the desert, and I feel like growing up in the IE, like, you're just used to the heat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? I don't know if you guys feel that way. So, like, it didn't really scare me moving out over there. Um, I didn't anticipate, like, the lack. I feel like there's not a lot of restaurants. Yeah. Because it is, like, so touristy. Yeah. Um, And also, like, I didn't even think about this, but, like, it's so windy all the time. Yes. Like, this breeze is so strong. Oh, shit. Um, so it's not even the heat over there. It's yeah. just, like, crazy wind. I went yeah. camping over there, and uh -huh. we didn't do anything because the, the wind was just yeah. too strong. So we just stayed in their little camper the whole time. Oh, my goodness. You can't even have, like, a campfire because, like, you'll have, like, a natural disaster. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, seriously. That's tough. Does it, um, does, it doesn't, like, bum you out being alone? I love it. Yeah. Um, I have like three chickens. So did I'm, you name them? Of course I did. <laughs> um, it's Loretta, Ducky, and Pickle. I love them. Oh, my girls. beautiful I, names. Thank you. you. Let me see how. I can't wait till they have eggs though, because. You know, oh, they're like that. um, they're like egg laying chicken. Is that what you got them? Hell yeah! Because I'm about that breakfast life. Um. Oh, so yeah, I think in like ten weeks. Damn, eggs. that's cool. I want that because I feel like living off your own product is better. Like I, there used to be a chicken farm down the street from my house, and they moved, uh, and it's too far now. So now I have to buy it from the the store. But I'm always like, oh, I wish I had some fucking chickens. I could just go outside and be like, oh, I'm gonna make. I couldn't eat breakfast today actually because I had no eggs. Right. Yeah. Eggs are important. Isn't it crazy how like we like categorize like foods like oh like this is a breakfast food when it's like it's really it's just a food. Just a food. <laughs> like everyone when you say eggs everyone thinks breakfast. It's right. Like, That's me though. Like um I have salmon and quinoa right now and yeah. I was like I can't eat this. This is lunch food. <laughs> See? <laughs> like, That's wild. How, but I brought it anyways because I was starving. No, but yeah. I'm like ew like this isn't for breakfast. I can't eat this right, right? now. But oh like I remember the first time someone ever told me like to have pancakes for dinner. I was like what? That's, are you kidding me? That's Isn't offensive. The time? But like, something about eating breakfast for dinner is elite. Like eating dinner for breakfast is ugh, but eating breakfast for dinner is just like, oh my god, this is so good right now. Yeah, my life was definitely changed after that. I was like, I didn't know I was allowed to do this. Yes. Like, it was wild. My and mind then, was blown. Like, did you know there's some people that don't eat cereal at night? They're like, no, that's for breakfast. I'm like, no, this that's is for my, my midnight snack. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's like the munchy snack you have. Some people don't. Do you Cereal smoke? tastes better, <laughs> I feel like, at night. Yeah, you it know? hits better. The crunch just tastes better. Especially when you're high. Do you smoke? <laughs> I don't <laughs> smoke anymore. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like maybe I, I haven't gotten my strains right or something because I feel like it doesn't hit me the same anymore. Mm. So then what I do you just mean? Like, what does that mean? Like the strains of weed? Yeah, like, or I don't know. Maybe I'm not, do, maybe I'm doing something differently because like before it used to be fun and now it's like, okay, now I have anxiety. Okay, now oh, I have a panic attack. I actually just saw that okay. that supposedly like weed now is because they're adding so much shit to it. Like it just gives you like insane like awareness whereas yeah. before it was all shits and giggles. I'm good on the awareness. Like, I already have too much anxiety. Yeah, like, I'm yeah, good. I don't yeah. need to be more aware. But it's definitely true of um, once you get a good strain that you know, like, that hits you good, just stick with that. Because I feel like that's, uh, that was my thing, too, where it's like, what the fuck? Like, I used to just laugh at everything, and I'm just mm -hmm. fucking getting anxiety for everything. But yeah. um, it was because back then, I just would smoke anything and everything. Like, I didn't care what it was called. Like, just give it to me. But now, <laughs> okay. I'm just, now I'm just like, now I'm just like, okay, what what is it called? You know, I'm doing my research, you know, and I, like now I'm being like more conscious about what I buy. But you know, when that's you're, good, when you're I like just fifth, going, when you're 14, 15, smoking bitch, you, mm. you don't know where the fuck you're. You're just like, you, anybody got a plug? Like, I can't go to the <laughs> dispo. Like, your homie that you know works behind Cardenas has some. Period. Like, let's go. Like, it just it was bad. But, I feel like it's easier for me now, but that's why I'm like, I hate when I go into the, to the like, Dispo, and then they're like, oh, yeah, this has this and this, and I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Just like, <laughs> just gonna get me high? Okay, cool. Just gonna get to mm -hmm. yeah, that, that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I want to talk about your pajama party. <gasps> ah! Wait, are you guys coming? I am. Dude, I want to, you but have I have to, to find a babysitter. I'm trying. My heart is. It's the only thing that being a mom. I know. I, I'm taking my child. <laughs> Bring him. It's 21 and over, right? Yes. Oh, she's having a PJ party. Do I have to go in my pajamas? So we're saying PJs, but like make it fashion. You okay. Know? So like something satin, something feathery. Mm. Like don't show up in the SpongeBob pajamas from high school, you know. Yeah, because I have to be most of pajamas that I'm <laughs> living in. That was my whole MO. Damn it. 
And I, I love Spongebob. I was telling you the other day. Like, Spongebob was like my childhood right there. Like, Dude, your shoes are the slippers with the big Literally. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna go drip down in Spongebob. I was gonna go on my Adam Sandler vibes. Like oh, a yeah, big yeah. ass t-shirt and some sweats or something. I support it, honestly. It's, it's a party? Yeah, so we're hosting the first ever 21 and over Latina slumber party. Cute. It's called Via Mala. And we want to do them, like, in more cities. So if you miss this one, we'll host another one. Um, but I don't know about y'all, but, like, my parents, like, didn't really let me spend the night anywhere. Never. Porque uno nunca sabe. Mm-hmm, period. And so this is us healing our inner child <laughs> with that. alcohol. What inspired the, the party? Because I wasn't there something going on that somebody else had something, didn't feel inclusive? Or was that, was that did I just watch something? I could have sworn I saw, like, a TikTok and you were, like, explaining, you know, like... Oh, yeah. So I think a lot of people are, are curious, like, can I bring my mans? Because it's we keep saying, like, Latina slumber party. Mm. But, like, definitely, like, anyone can come. It'll be, like, a very safe space. Um, but if you do want to bring your mans, like, he has to spend money on you, Ooh. you know? Or buy you have the mother Preach. merch because we'll have a pop-up. Cute. But yeah, it's like a very girly space. My man's gonna be like, oh no, it's okay, just go. <laughs> you go. <laughs> and I love that. I love men like that. They're like, it's a girl thing, go. Go do your right. girl thing. Yeah, but he's just saying that because he doesn't want to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck about that. Um, so it's um it's like an all night thing or how's that going down? Um, it's an all night thing. Well, like the club ends at like one, so don't oh, okay. don't actually spend the night at the club. <laughs> please, please, what club is it? Um, it's called High Tide in downtown. Have you all never? Been there? I don't really go. I've to never clubbed in LA, so I'm excited. I hope I can make it. Please, are yeah. you gonna go with? I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm probably gonna tell my friends to go. Maybe in Destiny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to be no, there. Can I tag with go. you guys if I go? Hell yeah. Okay, because I have no friends. <laughs> but now I have to go shopping because I really actually don't. I'm not a pajama girl. I'm literally like, when people are like, oh, let's get comfortable. I'm going to throw on, if my dad's t-shirt's there, I'm going to throw that on. Right. And if my man's boxers are there, then I'm going to throw those on. I'll just right. take all my clothes off and be naked. Yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah. It's so much easier. Right? But yeah, so now I have to go pajama shopping. Hmm. Um, Put pics in the group chat, please. I want to see yes. what y'all are wearing. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm please. done. Actually, send us your it so i can okay, know I the you. vibe to go off of i'm, I'm already bougie thea like i want the feathers i want yeah like, if l woods was coming i feel like that's what i'm doing Ooh, oh, I, love love. That. I pictured immediately like a satin slip-on gown right. you know something that is like a little dress but it's satin and i want it like cinched my waist you know just make it like, i pictured you in like the um like a bata but with like feathers around yes, girl. Yeah, that's, oh, that's yes. the vibe i, I was thinking that. of yeah, i would yeah. love that I actually have one of those and I left it in Mexico. Bitch. I, just, I bought it for my wedding and I uh-huh. left it. I didn't even use oh, it. I okay, left okay. it over there. Yeah. Oh, how cute. Would you get it at Amazon? I did get it on No, Maybe but if I order one on Amazon, it'll be here in time, huh? It won't. Yeah. That shit took like two months to, to show up. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll find one on offer. Maybe, some, maybe, somebody, <laughs> Probably. maybe someone's selling one. And uh, what are the times? Tell the people what the times are. Okay, so the times are 8 to 1. There is no cover. You just have to be 21 and over. And high tide downtown July first. Dope. And the pop up's gonna be inside of the club. Yeah, we'll have a pop up. We'll have our merch. We have a really cute setup for everybody. And I'm excited because we have like an all Latina DJ lineup Ooh, too. Fun. So it's really like Latina everything. I oh my that. god, I'm so excited! Yep. I've been like wanting to party for a little bit now. I haven't gone like actually clubbing we in a outside. long time. Yeah, yes. I'm excited. Now well, I have to find a babysitter. <laughs> I know when you said that, I was like, please. Uh, first of all, I don't even like driving to LA like that. So you know it's going to go down because I don't drive to LA She that never often. does, yeah. Really? I don't, I'm we don't. Either. Either. It's a lot. It's too far. It's crazy. And like, yeah. it used to be like, oh, you know, an hour drive. Now it takes me the same amount of time it takes me to go to San Diego. Like, I'd rather just go to San Diego at that point. Mm-hmm. Do you guys hang out in Riverside or like downtown Riverside? Yeah, Is there I do. like more stuff to do there now? Not really. I mean, they they opened up like a nut, like the like the food lab. I guess is cool, mm. but it's because the clubs are kind of like I hate to say it, but they're a little they're literally on the tra a little on the trashier side. But they're fun. Like I think they're so much fun because on Wednesdays, like on Wednesdays at Pixels, they have like video game night, but people still go and get fucked up and dance. Like I used to go literally in my sweats and just to go and like drink, but you end up getting like wasted and right. I like that vibe. Some people don't. I personally do. Some bitch threw water in my face. Thought it was hilarious. Like, I just... I love the drama, the what? chaos. I'm there for the chaos of it only. So I have fun. I, I want to club with you so bad like that because I just want to see you get into some shit. 
I never fight. I'm not like a fighter. I just <laughs> like obnoxious like scenarios. So I try to put myself in them. Yeah. yeah. I would just be there recording everything. Yeah. Like one time <laughs> it was like 5 a.m. This guy was like, hey. And I was like, he's here. He's trying to traffic me. And everyone was like, and I was like, guys, help. Like, and I called my man. And I was like, can you pick me up? They're trying to like kidnap oh, me right now. God. Yeah. I'm all about the drama. <laughs> I love it. True Leo Queen. He was not trying to traffic No, you. he was not. No. He was like Sorry. asking for yeah. directions or Probably. something. Probably. He's like, trying He's like, ma'am, just... are you okay? <laughs> Fuck you. He's like, ma'am, your Uber's right there. Like, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry to that man. Uno I... nunca sabe. It's Uno a nunca scary sabe. world. Uno nunca sabe. You know, I'm... it's society's fault that we're traumatized like this. <laughs> it's not. It's men. I've I do it out of experience. Like, I'm not just being mean to men for fun like i, I have been in bad situations <laughs> i really have i've been in bad situations where i'm like right. men can't be trusted ever so mm. but i do want to publicly apologize to him if he ever sees this um i am sorry he's gonna see the tiktok there's that fucking bitch <laughs> <laughs> it was That's embarrassing so that was embarrassing <laughs> Ew, ew, I'm gonna erase it. Erase it from my brain. Erase it from my brain. Honestly, I don't I don't feel like that would have been embarrassing. Like I would have thought back on that, but like, remember when I did that? That's hilarious. <laughs> it was only embarrassing because I was around so many people and then uh, I called Alex and he had work at six and I called him at like four thirty to pick me up. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was why did I do that? You know, I feel like you <laughs> gave everybody a great story to tell. Their That's true. I definitely story. think that though. I think when chaotic things happen in clubs, like it makes for a really good story. Always, always. Right. Yeah, like I'm going to tell before we I'm a, before we head out, but like I'm going to tell you guys right now. Um when Mexico for my wedding, my cousins went to the club and I have this cousin, she's amazing cat, I love you. Um they went clubbing with my brother and I guess it was so packed that like the cups fell, so glass was stuck to the bottom of people's shoes. Oh no. And my cousin, you know, she got a little bit of money, so she she was wearing her YSLs and someone stepped on her and my brother said that blood started like literally he said that he's never seen so much blood in his life it was just like scurrying out like out of her foot and my cousin's being super dramatic took off his shirt and like tied it around her foot my other cousin took off his belt like trying to cut the circulation and so they're like dragging her because she's bleeding out and like i guess like they were holding her kind of like like that and my brother was like y la cabrona ni calzones tenía so like her whole pussy was out to the club and as they're dragging her out she's like somebody get my heels like my, my heels my wife <laughs> like dude that is amazing <laughs> like, iconic that is such a hilarious story and i couldn't be there you know what i mean <laughs> yeah so now it's just a story about someone i know that's hilarious <laughs> oh, sh- i like, love her i love chaotic stuff like that it's really funny so did she get her heels at the end she did okay, and then the next her. yeah the next day she posted them on her story like full of blood and low-key they were like they look nice <laughs> <laughs> they look like a vibe it was cool yeah. i was like mujeres asesinas <laughs> oh i loved i i remember that show it was good dude don't talk about no shows because i watch all of them like i was on i was a tv girl like i would be eating and i'd be watching tv so i was always watching like i wanted to be on univision when i was little that was like my (laughs) dream and my goal that is no longer my dream and goal did i'm sorry going back did you graduate from like business or something from school or you just no what did you graduate from um so in college my major was religious studies so random (laughs) such a long story but yeah, like nada que ver. Um, nada que ver I, I always did like um, graphic design for like my school oh, newspaper. Dope. So that like always carried on. So like dope. I didn't have a job when I graduated college, but I like used those design skills for like an internship, mm. and then a freelance nice. business, and then he had tu madre. Nice. Oh, dope. Yeah. Dope, but dope. religious studies, so random. That is Do you random. still, is it something that you're still like interested in or it was just like, oh, time's passed? I think like personally, yeah, I like geek out on like spirituality and like mm-hmm. world religions and stuff. Like I love that stuff. But like professionally, I'm good. Mm, I'm that. so good. Yeah. What yeah. Pro- what profession could you go into with that degree? Like either a priest or like <laughs> a professor. There's like no, there's that's it. And that was your goal in the beginning? Uh, I wanted to be like a professor. Okay. But, like, professors are very miserable, I think. Yeah, I don't think they're happy. Some of them, yeah. 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 They do it because they're like, well, this is where my yeah. career has gone now. Oh, right. Can't do teach. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is such a terrible saying. It is. I, know. I hate it. But it's sad because they're like cool. They have a lot of like life experiences. And maybe right. even like, and once you're older, you could probably. Oh my gosh, that'd be a dream. Yeah. 
like go to community college and like teach a class or something. Oh yeah, that'd be super cool. Right. Dude, I feel like you could, right? I think so. Imagine yeah. you just walk into like a whole like classroom and then it's like you're just like, uh oh, stop. I'm taking over the class. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know that you weren't scheduled. They have no I'm clue who you, you are. Finish, bro, <laughs> it's a biology class, not even the subject that you wanted. Like you just ran Yeah, that'd be so even how you said right now, super cute profe. Hola profe. <laughs> So, um, I'm like cracking up, just imagining like the class is like five minutes before class starts, professors and they just walk in, hey guys, I'm their sub for today. Everybody's like, oh, okay, like, cool, like, the sub. <laughs> and they just go on and on ranting about like whatever you want to talk about. Sub. And then the professor walks in, like, what are you doing? He's like, here? all right, like, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> like, just got it on. from here, got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your next goal for Hija de tu Madre? Is what's next? Um, I think it's a couple things one i'm really focused on like trying to be outside so bringing the brand like outside love like that. having like different pop-ups okay. like love we that. hosted like a picnic in san antonio recently oh awesome where we bought just like brought a bunch of like latina creators and we just hung out so like doing more stuff like that too like maybe it doesn't have to necessarily be a pop-up but like creating spaces for like yeah. Latinas mm-hmm. to just I love that. have That's a amazing. safe space. I love that. So yeah, I'd love for us to be in a mall or a store or in Target. If Ooh. you're watching this, Target. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like I just want our products to be more accessible to people. Yeah. Do you there. um? What is it? What is it when you send it? PR. Do PR. No, 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 no. Deliver? Not deliver. Ship. Do you ship? internationally i totally blanked out right now no, or is it just yeah. more um like like do you ship to like mexico and stuff yeah so i think to date we've sold to like over 30 countries wow Ooh. yeah we out here nice we out here we really are. um that. yeah to like crazy places like to japan pan to like dubai Ooh, to, that like, is so amazing Europe. wow that's fucking yeah latinos dope. are everywhere love that i love that too yeah. i love the latinos that are starting to come up from um england <laughs> yeah that, they're amazing come- what that is not my algorithm really dude I i've been getting see- them on my for you page and it's like they're, they're switching it up like with the heavy like european accent and they'll just jump into like all that i'm like what the yes fuck? it's like, so funny because they talk in their like br- like english accent and then they're like and then they start talking spanish like oh ¿qué pasa? Like, super funny that is so cool that's me <laughs> i identify with, oh, no do the outro i'm like nervous that. Oh, okay i'll do the outro like that <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being on here with us. It was so much fun, and it was so nice to meet you. Thank you, besties. Seriously, this was fun. Vibe. Thank you, guys. Yes, and I am so excited for your, honestly, your company to just continue growing because yeah. it's it's amazing. It's a really, really dope project that you've taken upon yourself. Thank you. We're doing it. You guys are doing it, too. Like, it's so nice to see Latinas winning, so we out here. Yes, thank supporting you, each you. other. I love that so much. <laughs> but, oh, wait. Yeah. I don't know. I get nervous when I'm like put on the spot to do it. No, you got this. Do your, do your thing, Miss Girl. All right, love. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We've had an amazing time. It was just a jolly old good time. I am your host, Stephanie, and you can find me at Steph Scott Milk on anything. Ya saben, compadres. Oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That was so good. And I'm your host, Vanessa Casares, and you can find me at bloomingbc.vic on Instagram and TikTok. I really need to get like a name. Yeah, I'm one. That's the same. Yeah, I'm, t- I'm tired of like saying three different names for three different things. And our lovely guest. Go ahead. Hi. You can follow Hija Tu Madre at Hija Tu Madre on Instagram and TikTok, and visit us at hijatumadre.com. Do you want to put in your your own social? Um, yeah, you can follow me at Party Skinny on Instagram. I post a lot of out of pocket things, so it's a good time. I she love made, it. Her page is amazing, y'all. Definitely yeah. check it out. I love it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next week. Love you, besties.